Greater Emmanuel Temple. Pastor Hurst, y'all. Lady Hurst, y'all. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Come and be blessed at the Greater Emmanuel Temple. Come and be blessed. You can get what you need from God. Come, on. Come and be blessed at the Greater Emmanuel Temple where God is mm-hmm. with us. He's here with where us. Where God is Ooh, okay. with us. Say here. Say and be blessed at the Greater Emmanuel Temple. you everyone. My name is Bishop Jermaine D. Hurst, Senior Pastor of Greater Manual Temple Church, the Church of Champions in the beautiful city of Buffalo, New York. Listen, I am so very excited that you have joined us today for our broadcast. Those of you that are on our conference call and those of you that are watching us on Facebook Live and YouTube, we want to welcome you. We also want to thank you so much for your financial support to this ministry. It is you, your faithful giving, that has helped us to do the things that we do to glorify God and to reach souls. And so we want you to continue to partner with us us and sow a seed. Those of you that can sow a $20 seed or whatever the Lord lays on your heart, you see the information on the stream. Well, I'm so very excited because I'm starting a new series today entitled Jesus Factor. And I certainly know that Jesus makes the difference in our lives. There is a Jesus Factor. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you are facing, Jesus can come through and make the difference in our lives. Well, today's message that I'm going to share with you is entitled, I Change My Mind. That's right. You have the ability as well as the opportunity to change your mind. Maybe you might not be doing the right thing, or maybe you're caught up in the wrong situations, or maybe you just made up in your your mind you're not going to receive what's going on in your life today. Well, you can make the change by saying to yourself, I have changed my mind. Enjoy the word and we look forward to talking to you again. In Jesus' name, God bless you all. Nobody but you. 
bless you everyone uh, my name is Bishop Jermaine D. Hurst and we just want to thank you for joining us once again uh, we pray that the worship and the praise experience has been a blessing to you uh, because we recognize that without the presence of God we can do nothing it's in him that we live we move and we have our being and we thank God just for you father in the name of Jesus God we thank you for who and what you are to us we ask Lord that you would bless us to speak your word to encourage someone even now anoint me afresh and allow your glory and your anointing to destroy every yoke and to loose every chain bind every spirit that is not like you and we pray that your presence would reach every phone every tablet every computer every home and those that are listening on the conference call and watching on social media we pray that they will be blessed and that they would feel your presence and that yokes will be destroyed even now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Those of you right now, if you don't mind, if you can throw some emojis up, uh, hit the like button and write amen, just type amen. We want to welcome you all once again uh, to the Great Emmanuel Temple Church, the Church of Champions in the beautiful city of Buffalo, New York. Uh, we have our prayer warriors, our prayer counselors uh, that are waiting for you. Uh, the number's on the screen. If you like to have prayer, you can call us right now for prayer and someone will pray with you. And if you would like to partner with us and connect to this ministry, you see the number on the screen. You just text that number, the word champs, and we will be connected. But we thank God for you. So we're going to go into the word of God. 
and it's coming from the book of St. Matthew, chapter number 21, and verses number 28 through 32. It says, But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whither of them twain did the will of his father? They say unto him the first. Jesus saith unto him, unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. I'm going to be taking my subject from verse 28, but but think ye a certain man had two sons and he came to the first and said, son, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. But afterwards he repented and went. The, the word repented means the changing of one's mind, which then affects behavior. So I'm going to speak to you, and I'm starting a new series this month entitled The Jesus Factor. And so today's sermon is entitled, I Changed My Mind. I Changed My Mind. Can you write that down on the screen? I Changed My Mind. And those of you right now, since you can't really tell your neighbor, can you at least share with your neighbor? Hit the like and hit the share button. Here in this particular text, Jesus was teaching in the temple and was interrupted by the chief priests, the Pharisees, and the elders of the people. They had proposed two questions for Jesus to answer pertaining to his authority and his public ministry. The issue was because in this day, the chief priests, their responsibilities were to, number one, to be the captain and overseer of the temple. Number two, their responsibilities was to be the director of daily and weekly course and schedule events. And number three, the chief priest's job was to be the treasurer of the temple. And so one of the issues was that Jesus shows up at the temple uninvited. He comes and he begins to teach in the environment that the status quo was in control of, so they thought. And so they interrupted him. I'm still glad and I'm still happy that Jesus still has a way of interrupting our schedules. He still has a way of interrupting something that we have organized. Isn't it amazing that even in this time of quarantine, this time of pandemic, that a lot of things upon our regular scheduled events, even what we call church or what we even call our social norms have been disturbed. Not just by COVID, but I believe God has a plan to turn some things upside down, inside out, to remind us that without him, we can do nothing. The questions that they asked Jesus was two of them when they interrupted him while he was teaching in the temple. The first question was, by what authority are you doing these things? And the second question was, and who gave you this authority? And according to Matthew chapter number 21, verses 24 through 27, it gives us the dialogue that Jesus has with the particular chief priests, the Pharisees, and the elders of the people. 
Jesus begins to tell them, he says, listen, I will answer your two questions if you just answer my one question. And so Jesus then proposes a question. And he says, those of you that know John the Baptist, John the Baptizer, he said, if you answer this question, then I will answer you. His baptism and what he stood for, did it come from man or did it come from heaven above? The Bible says that those chief priests and the Pharisees and the elders, they kind of huddled together and began to speak and to talk among themselves. And they said, well, this is an issue and it's very hard for us to answer this question. So we must think because we have a crowd of people around. The Bible says they said among themselves that if we say that John was a true prophet, and his standard was sent from heaven. The people will want to know, then why did we not follow? And why did we not support him? And if we say he was a false prophet, and that everything he did came from man, then we risk ourselves of starting a riot because these very same people believe that John was a godly man. And Jesus, because he's the master teacher, he knew that I'm going to ask you a question. And if you answer it, I will respond to your two. And so the response to, from the chief priests and the Pharisees and those that were there, the elders, they said, well, we cannot answer. Cannot answer you right now. And Jesus simply says, well, since you can't answer me. I will not answer you. But Jesus does something quite interesting. Is that after he told them that he would not answer them, he begins in his own way to rebuke them and to teach them through parables. Because I told you Jesus is a master teacher. The Bible says in verse number 28, that he then looks to the crowd and looks back at the Pharisees and the chief priests that were in the crowd. He begins to address them and it says, uh, what think ye? I want to know, what, what do you all think about this situation? He says, a certain man had two sons. And he came to his first son and said, son, go work for me today. In my vineyard, Jesus says that the first son looked at his father and said, I will not go. I don't want to do it. I don't want to work for you. I don't want to work in the vineyard. Jesus says eventually, we don't know why, but that first son, he winded up repenting, feeling sorry that he had disappointed his father and said that he wasn't going to do what he, his father wanted him to do. So the Bible says he repented and he went to the vineyard and began to do the work. So in other words, he started off wrong, but eventually he made the right decision, changed his mind, and did the right thing. The father did not know that the first son was going to change his mind, so uh, my first son rejected me. So I went to my second son. And Jesus says, when the father went to the second son, he said unto him the same thing, son, I want you to go and work for me in my vineyard. I have need of you. And the second son with a smile said, yes, sir, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do it, daddy. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to help you and going to help you get through this and help you to build this vineyard and get it done. And the Bible says that Jesus said that the second son, even though he smiled and he told his father what he wanted to hear, his behavior did not line up with his words. Because as soon as he left his father, the Bible says he never went to the vineyard to do anything that his father told him to do. 
And then Jesus, because he's a master teacher, asks everybody and even asks the chief priests and the, the Pharisees and the elders that were standing by. He says, now you tell me, uh, who do you think, which one pleased the father? The one that said yes and did not do what he was supposed to do? Or the one that said no but repented and changed his mind and did the will of his father. Which one pleased him? Everybody said, well, it's the first son. Even though the first son did not answer the narrative in the affirmative. But he changed his mind and repented. And then did the right thing. Jesus told everybody, you answered well. And Jesus, because he's a master teacher, he looked at the Pharisees and the chief priests and the elders of the people that were standing by that were seemingly in charge of the spiritual walk of God's people, who seemingly were the ones that gave God a yes. He says, verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots, Lord have mercy, and they will go into the kingdom of God before all of y'all. Lord have mercy. Jesus says, because when I sent John, and when John came, because he asked him about John's baptism, and they wanted to deny John. He said, because you didn't believe in John. John gave us a way of righteousness. And you didn't believe in him, but these publicans, these harlots, these ungodly people, they changed their minds and began to get baptized and they sought for the mind of God. And because they were willing to change their minds about their situation, they will please the Father, but you did not please God. I began to think about this, how the time we're living in now, how Jesus presents to us that he is the factor we're going to be exploring some parables this month. Some of the teachings that Jesus would present to us to show us a better way of living. And I began to think about this. What was Jesus conveying to the people and conveying to those who were seemingly religious but were at the same time missing the move of God? I believe that even today that some of us that we've been out of church, that some of you actually think that you need to be in the four walls of the church to, to show that you love God. And some of us, uh, because we are not in the choir and able to sing like we would normally do and not able to be in the sanctuary like we would normally do, uh, some of us have found ourselves compromising our walk with God. Uh, it's not about what church you go to. It's not about whose hand you are holding is not about what stamp of approval you get from whatever denomination you're in. You have to know God for yourself. And that's what it is. So when I look at this story about these two sons, how one, the first son said, I'm not going to do it. This son reminds me of someone like me. And maybe you that are watching right now and those of you that may be listening in this sanctuary, have you ever told God no? Have you ever did something that God did not want you to do? But deep down you begin to change your mind about what you were doing. And you decided I'm going to do that which is pleasing unto God. I need somebody right now to write on the screen, please God. That, that, that is the major thing that we have to do. We just can't be just willing to please other people. Please the pastor. Please uh, your, your, those on your employers and your friends and family members. Because even though when you try to please a man, you can't please man all of the time. Because there comes a time when people will be just disappointed in you just because. And let me tell you something about a revelation of an appointment. You cannot just focus on people appointing you. Because when they get disappointed, they will move you out of that space that you feel that you belong in. But brothers and sisters, I want you to be encouraged that you make up in your mind to please God. And so, number one, I want you to understand that life 
life is based on the sum total of our decisions and choices. Let me say that again. Number one, life is based on the sum total of our decisions and choices. You have made maybe made a bad decision, but you can't let that one bad decision determine your destiny because life is based on the sum total of our decisions and choices. I've made some bad choices. I made some bad decisions, but not all of my decisions and choices have been bad. I'm so glad that one of the greatest choices that have been ever been made was that God chose me and he chose you. So I decide now that you know what, since he chose me, I just want to choose Jesus. And so brothers and sisters in Deuteronomy chapter number 30 and verse number 19, the Bible says, I call heaven and earth uh, to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death and blessings and cursing therefore choose life and both thou and thy seed may live somebody need to write down choose life choose life oh God somebody ought to praise them even now so when we choose life brothers and sisters it's very important that we understand that some are choosing death uh, so when you have a, a relationship with God you are choosing life even Joshua uh, chapter 24 and verse number 15 reminds us as he talks to the children of Israel he reminds us the necessity and the importance of making a choice he says that it is seem evil unto you to serve the Lord he says choose you this day whom you will serve he says whether the gods of your fathers which served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites and whose land ye dwell but he says but as for me and my house we will serve the Lord I, I don't know how you feel about it but I made up in my mind I'm going to serve the Lord even the proverbial writer reminds us and shares wisdom about how we must make the right choices and decisions. Proverbs 14 and 12 says, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death. Uh, there, there, some people may feel like they're doing the right thing and they're making the right choices. Uh, the second son made the wrong choice. Uh, the second son he said, yes, I will go and yes, I will do it but when the rubber met the road, when it came down to uh, concluding of the conclusion of the whole matter, when it came to performance, he failed to perform the thing that he said that he would do. I would rather have a misunderstanding and fall with the mindset that I can still get up and work it out than to pretend to be something that I'm not. Uh, see, the thing is, is that in life there are a lot of pretenders and pretenders will lie to themselves and think that they're all right with God. No, 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 brothers and sisters. I'm not telling you to fake it till you make it. I'm telling you to faith it till you make it. You still got to have faith that God's going to bring you through regardless of how people feel about you. So, brothers and sisters, Proverbs 16 and 9 says, Oh God, a man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. I'm so glad that he's a God of steps. Uh, David said I have been young but now I'm old yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. Uh, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way though he fall or interesting though he fall he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholds him in his hand. Is it possible to follow Jesus and to try to do your best to please him but you will fall along the way. Yes you may fall but you don't have to stay down or oh, who I'm preaching to right now you have been down for long enough and you can choose that today I'm going to get back up today I'm going to make some change today I'm going to be the head and not the tail I'm going to be over and not beneath I've been at the bottom even Drake told you he started at the bottom now we're here you have to be able to find a starting point that you recognize your bottom and if you recognize your bottom you want to celebrate the fact that your bottom is not your top who I'm preaching to right now you have to be able and willing to understand 
that your choices makes the difference. The Bible says this to us in Proverbs 19 and 21. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the purpose of God that shall prevail. Even the Bible says to us in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Uh -huh. And the Bible also teaches us in Matthew 6 and 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. I, I want to get you excited today to understand that your situation can change and turn all because you chose God. You have to be willing to make the right decision. The reason why some of us are bound because we fail to make the right decision. But whenever you have a chance you can seek after God right now and choose Jesus. I just wish I had five folk that were right on the screen choose Jesus. I wish someone right now that is listening on the phone that will say within yourself I choose Jesus. Open up your mouth right now and shout hallelujah and give God praise if you glad you made the right choice. Yeah. So brothers and sisters, listen. Uh, Jesus begins to give us a revelation of choice. Uh, that we have the ability to change our minds. Uh, and whenever you change your mind, you can change your destiny. Uh -huh. So number one, I want you to understand uh, that you have the ability to choose. Uh, that life is based on the sum total of our decisions and our choices but number two uh, what we learn about these two sons is that we have to learn to give God a yes a uh -huh, yeah it's not just a yes from your lips but you got to give God a yes from your heart Jesus said when he saw the people of God going up to the temple to worship he stopped the processional and said and quoted from the mouth of Isaiah he said these people come to me with their lips but their heart is far from me who I'm preaching to now Lord search my heart I don't want to be in a place where I just come with lip service I don't want to be in a place where the only reason I give you praise is because what you give to me every day you would think that a son would say yes to the father but one son said no the other one said yes but then the first son that said no deep down in his heart he repented and changed his mind while the other one looked in front of the father he was more concerned about how it looked and how it sound I wish I had a few folk to recognize that you can no longer just worry about what people think about you but there's got to be a level in God that when my yes has got to come from my heart I was somebody give God a yes I need about about 20 of you right now to write yes on the screen yes Lord yes Lord Lord have mercy the songwriter used to say to us one of the old school songs I said yes Lord yes to your will and to your way I say yes Lord yes I will trust you and obey when the spirit speaks to me with my whole heart I agree and my answer it will be yes Lord yes you got to give him a yes Lord you may not understand what you're going through but you got to give him a yes yeah you might not have a lot of money but you got to give God a yes 
things may be going crazy in your life right now but I command you in the name of Jesus and I double dog dare you to give God a yes shout a yes say yes give God a praise right now brothers and sisters after you give God a yes number three you got to understand that you might have told God no but I'm glad with number three that the Jesus factor gives us opportunity to change our mind yes have you ever had to change your mind when you was going to do the wrong thing have you ever had to change your mind when you were saying the wrong thing have you ever had to change your mind when you were with the wrong one doing the wrong thing but I'm so glad that every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before and the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord so I want to tell you now that God will help you get through your pain God will help you go to the next level yes if you change your mind he will show you that if any man be in Christ he is a new creature all things are passed away all things are become new who I'm preaching to you're just one praise away from your next victory you're one decision away for God to change your life and if I were you right now I would recognize that power belongs to God and there is nothing too hard for God open up your mouth right now and celebrate him you may have said no but this is the day that the Lord has made I shall rejoice and be glad in it I'll give God a yes yes to your will yes to your way here I am Jesus here's my cup I lift it up come and quench this thirsting in my soul bread from heaven feed me till I want no more shout it I change my mind I was on my way to hell but I change my mind I was going to die but I change my mind I was going to go crazy but I change my mind I change my mind bless him lift him praise him yeah 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 change change your mind bless his name yeah Come on and bless him. If you change your mind, you ought to bless him. If you change your mind, you ought to praise him. I'm not going to die. I'm going to live. I'm going to declare what the will of the Lord is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, praise him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him.
Give them praise, give them praise, give them praise, give them praise, give them praise. Listen, 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 listen. God has a plan for your life. But it's based on the decision. We all have the Jesus factor. But you have to choose Jesus. He says, I have chosen you. You have not chosen me. And I have a danger. God has already made his choice. So since he's chosen you, why don't you be willing to choose him? Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for those who have watched. May this word bless them. May they understand that they have the opportunity right now to change their mind. We thank you for this, that you have given us grace, not to sin, but the grace to come out of sin. Yes. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? No. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Father, we thank you that you have given us grace and mercy to choose you to come out. We repent right now. We change our minds right now. Anything in us that's not like you, take it out. Wash us, cleanse us, and purify us. Even now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Listen, I want to thank God for all of you that connected with us, hit that share button right now. Share this word with somebody. Share this moment with someone. And if the Lord has blessed you, sow a seed, connect, and help us perpetuate this glorious gospel all over the world. Well, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you for even choosing to watch and to listen. And I want to thank God for choosing us. And I don't know about you, but I changed my mind. I'm not going to accept failure because failure is not an option for me. What about you? God bless you and may the Lord keep you and may the Lord bless you all real good. Wow. Well, that's all the time that we have on today. We want to thank God for all of you for your likes, your shares, and your comments, and just being a part of our church family, this virtual church family. So I want to give it up for all my e-church members and those of you that are connected to this ministry. I pray that you will join us again on next week for another powerful experience of worship and the word of God. And we thank you for just being a part of what the Lord is doing. So my name once again is Bishop Jermaine D. Hurst, and we want to thank you all for joining us again. And may the Lord bless you all real good. And so get the message out, share it, let people know we're on so that we can have even a greater response on our next broadcast. We love you and may the Lord be with you. What an awesome and timely word coming from our wonderful pastor, Bishop Jermaine D. Hurst. Now it's time for you to give. So into this good and fertile ground. You can give by way of Cash App by utilizing the dollar sign Get Champs, or you can look us up on Givelify at Greater Emmanuel Temple Incorporated. Thank you for tuning in to our today's broadcast. We hope to see you soon.